So this will be our first Kentucky Derby 150 top 20. I think we've had enough races now. We've got enough uh, contenders to take a look at that we can realistically uh, put together a top 20. And we'll take them at one at a, uh, five at a time like we, we normally do. Um, and you'll see, we'll start with Hades. I thought that Holy Bull was kind of a mess. Uh, you, you take out Tim uh, Fierceness in that race, and, and there really wasn't much there. But Hades did win it. Uh, he is a horse that uh, has shown some decent speed. And who knows, you know, if he can build off of that in the, in the Florida Derby or wherever he run next, runs next, then uh, possibly we got something. But uh, uh, he's kind of by default, he's on the list, let's say. Common Defense showed me something in the Rebel Stakes. I expected to see it in the Southwest Stakes, but uh, he didn't run much there. But he did come back and uh, saved a lot of ground on the rail. Uh, but he did run a, a really good race, I thought. Um, and, you know, classic Kenny McPeak coming from uh, behind, making a run. Um, he, you know, he, he we liked him before the Southwest Stakes. I think he's got some potential. Let's see if he can build off of it. Uh, Liberal Arts uh, didn't come off the bench terribly well. Uh, it was really disappointing effort in the LeCompte. I believe it was. And um, he, he needs to do better. Uh, he's a closer. He did show me enough at two years old to think that he's got potential and maybe he just needed a race. So I'm not ready to totally throw him out yet, but he's got to show something next time. Stronghold just needs to run against better competition to prove something to me. Uh, with the Bafferts being off the Derby Trail, uh, it really dilutes the quality of the California horses. And uh, he'll probably get in by uh, beating up on some pretty weak fields, uh, depending on how, how many Bafferts, uh, you know, if he puts them in there, where he does. But uh, he needs to do a lot better than beating uh, a bunch of local horses in the, uh, in the Sunland Derby. Uh, Latlong showed something in the LeCompte. Uh, I thought the fact that moving into his graded stakes race, that he was able to acquit himself as well as he did, I think showed something. Certainly want to see how he does in the Louisiana Derby or wherever he goes next. But uh, I think uh, the fact that he's uh, won at a lot of different tracks, he's shown a lot of, uh, he's shown some grit. Um, maybe, uh, you know, he's one of those many Kenny McPeaks we have this year where we're not totally sold on him, but they've shown enough to get you a little bit interested in him. And Lat Long is certainly one of those. Uh, we look at the, the next five, Just Steel. Uh, I think he really needed to take the Rebel Stakes off to have a, a really big chance to progress forward. Uh, now he's not going to get a break. He's going to go right from the Arkansas Derby to the Kentucky Derby. And, uh, this horse has some quality. He had a wide trip last time, so we can give him a little bit of a pass. But I thought it was really uh, more uh, evident that he just needs a break to, uh, to recharge a little bit. He's a big horse. He definitely has some quality. Uh, I do wonder about him at a mile and a quarter, uh, but um, I'm not ready to, again, I'm not going to throw him out yet, but I, I would have liked to have seen him had a break. I think it may compromise his chances later. Uh, Tuscan Sky on Risen Star Day uh, ran a really nice allowance race. Granted, it was a small field and it wasn't a slop, but uh, this is a pretty good looking horse. And, you know, if you consider all the Todd Pletchers, how they've come back this year, uh, he, this one's at the top of the class because uh, all the, you know, Loctus had his problems, Fierceness ran a dud. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the Todd Pletchers have been uh, underwhelming to say the least. So, Tuscan Sky, I don't like putting horses on here until they run in a stakes race, but I think it's more uh, how uh, what we've got to look at as far as contenders right now that he gets on this list. Uh, Ana Maria didn't think he did too badly in the Risen Star. I think we can give him a pass uh, being his first start of the year, but um, I really loved what he was doing at two years old. He's, he's got that really nice progression, uh, and um, now that he's got a race under him, um, in the Louisiana Derby, I, I think he's good. you're going to see a market improvement. And uh, if we do, I think that would put him, you know, right up there because I think this one's shown that uh, he's progressing in just the right fashion. Uh, resilience, I, I thought, ran a, uh, a really good uh, risen star. Uh, I sort of expected it. Um, he, uh, 
he's a Bill Mott. You know, he's been brought along slowly. He's been improving a little bit each time. But you really have to like that he goes to the maiden ranks right into a graded stakes. And I thought he acquitted himself pretty well. He looks like he's a cut below. Uh, maybe he doesn't quite have the top end of some of the others. But I think he's one that we have to consider. Uh, domestic product, I, I don't know how, ex, you know, I can't I'm gonna go back and forth with this one. He did run a, a, a good race last time, but uh, I, I don't know. I just, the, the, he, he needs to, I need to see another start to really get excited about him. I wasn't too thrilled with his efforts beforehand. Um, you know, I, I just, uh, he's by kind of, but like a lot of these, by default, he's on the list and uh, he did show a little something, so if he can build on it, you know, we'll see. And a top 10 is not going to change a whole lot. Uh, Mystic Dan is only there because he won the Southwest Stakes. I think that was very much mud is assisted, uh, and he did save a lot of ground in that race. Um, and uh, when you consider what he did in the race prior in the Smarty Jones, uh, I don't know that I have a whole lot of hope for this horse even staying on the list. Uh, we'll see. I mean, but... Uh, at Mystic Dan, it's more, uh, it's more the quality of the of the, <laughs> the list right now that he's on there. Uh, Forever Young in the uh, the Saudi Derby, that was a huge effort. I mean, he just ran lights out, uh, spotted the field a whole lot of ground, and he was still able to close and get up in time. So there, I think there's definitely some quality here, and uh, this is a horse I'm very interested in in seeing more of. Uh, he's got the pedigree to uh, to get the two turns. We he's proven it, and uh, it's he's a pretty exciting prospect from the Japanese. Uh, Catching Freedom is still, uh, I thought, ran a really good uh, a good Southwest Stakes. Uh, I think he's still kind of green, and um, that's what uh, really the issue with him. The fact that he got he's gone two starts in a row looking as green as he is is a bit of a concern. Brad Cox is a hell of a good trainer, and you would have liked to have thought that he would have uh, got this horse uh, a little more mature at this point. So uh, the, he's going to have to uh, mature a great deal if he's going to factor in this race. Running all over the place like he does is not good. So we'll we'll just have to see. And there was a risen star he ran in, I believe. Sorry about that. Uh, Track Phantom, I don't think he did anything wrong last time against... In the Risen Star against Sierra Leone, he just wasn't good enough. That was the bottom line. He has had a, some pretty soft fields he's been running against. Uh, Nash came back to run second again in another in an allowance race. So the jury is still out on track Phantom. Uh, we'll see how he does in the Louisiana Derby. But, you know, he hasn't done anything wrong, and, and he did finish second, so... Uh, I don't move him up or down the list, but uh, it is a little dubious whether or not that he'll he'll stay in the top 10. And then, of course, we've got Fierceness. Uh, we, the Holy Bull's been beaten to death. What a dud it was coming off the bench. But uh, this one still has some quality. And we'll have to see how much grit he does have, if he can encounter some adversity and overcome it. Uh, we'll see in his next start. But uh, I'm still not ready to completely give up on him, but it, it doesn't look good right now. And so our top five, uh, the wine steward, uh, he's got to run soon, uh, really soon. I, uh, you know, he, time is really running out on him. And uh, we had like Jace's Road last year. We waited forever for him, you know, and he got in the Louisiana Derby and then uh, it was a washout. But uh, the wine steward, I, you know, liked him at two. I think he showed a lot of grit. Uh, I would like to, he, I think he needs to improve his speed numbers to be sure, but um, he's a very intriguing prospect and I'd like to see him run again. Uh, Timberlake came off the bench, won the Rebel Stakes and did it exactly the way uh, you're supposed to. I don't think he was tuned up all the way. The end goal, of course, is the Kentucky Derby, but I thought he ran a very solid race. And for that reason, he gets to move up. He's one of the few who have come off the bench the more prominent two-year-olds who actually ran well coming off the bench. So uh, I don't know what that says right now, but uh, he certainly won that uh, right now. He looks pretty darn good. Locked, uh, I'm really, I got my doubts about the Fountain of Youth. I, I, I'm kind of thinking he's a pretty much a bet against because missing the training like he did, missed a full week of uh, uh, training with a temperature, 
Uh, I love this horse. I, he's got great acceleration, and we'll see how he does. If he can bounce back in the fountain of youth, uh, that would make him a really serious player. Uh, but again, the Todd Fletchers have not been doing too well so far, so we'll see. Dornock, really looking forward to seeing him in the fountain of youth. Uh, we want to see if it wasn't just the rail and the speed bias in the Remsen. Uh, he did show a lot of grit in that race. He's certainly been uh, running against some good quality fields as he did it too. And uh, if he's like his brother, uh, watch out. He, he could be, uh, he, he definitely should progress uh, at three when you consider Mage didn't run it too. So uh, Dornock definitely won uh, of the tops right now. And of course, Sierra Leone, uh, or Sierra Leone, uh, sorry, John, <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, he ran a great risen star. He closed against a, uh, a slow pace. Uh, he's a big horse, got a big stride. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how much tactical speed he has. But, you know, that maiden race, he did show some athleticism. And uh, I think that's very important to, to remember. Uh, he is at the top of the class right now. There's just a lot of things to like about him. Uh, but the jury is still a little bit out. I don't want to completely stamp him, but I'm pretty close to thinking he is uh, the, the Derby favorite, deservingly so right now. So if we look at our top 20 list, here's the thing. Really look at that list. That's a pretty mediocre list, in my opinion. Uh, if you would, you know, after uh, the two-year-old campaign in the Breeders' Cup, I thought we had a really good class of, two, of uh, potential Derby horses. And it, they, a lot of them have really disappointed uh, coming back to run at three. And uh, so look at this list. I mean, Hades would normally not be on this list, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Lat Long, uh, Resilience, Domestic Products, Mystic Dan. I mean, those are all horses that, you know, uh, in any in a year with a lot of with a really good crop at this time of the year, I don't think they'd be on the list. But they are, and um, it's just a weird year. I just don't know how good this class really is yet. But um, for now, this is what our top 20 looks like. I certainly think after the Fountain of Youth, we're going to have a much more definitive picture on what we're looking at. But uh, this is our first entry in the top 20. I expect a lot of changes after this coming weekend.